All right, YouTube, this is Detroit's HPTV coming to you out of Detroit. In this video, I'm going to show you the truth about why black men, <clears throat> black men in America, we cannot afford to let the Democrats get back in office. <clears throat> we cannot allow it. We cannot afford it. The black men is eligible to vote. You cannot give it to the Democratic Party. Let me give you a brief history of the Democratic Party. First, the Democratic Party were the slave owners. That's the plantation. The Republicans was the party of Lincoln. Joe Biden mentor was Strong Thurmond. That was his name. He was an advocate segregationist and a racist. Joe Biden, the only thing he's ever did for black men was call us super predators, create a crime bill that punished us exorbitantly above others. When he got in office, he told us we had to deal with the Mexicans and Hispanics because they were the new minority and they were going to outnumber us, and he did it with the borders. Then he told Charlemagne the God, if y'all don't vote for me, y'all ain't black. But this is a person who's never liked black people, especially black men. Kamala Harris, Kamala Harris, she identified as Indian and white until she ran for VP. Then she put on some Chuck Taylors and, and, and some pearls and tricked black women into voting for her. And then the first thing she did when she got in office, she said, I'm not going to do anything specifically for black people. They're running their whole mission to get the black vote on abortion. The only policy that they're offering black people is abortion. And that's crazy. Here's a man that we know called the super predators, destroyed most of the families with his crime bill. And then when the men were in prison because of his crime bills, he named the children that the men left out here super predators. And then his parties continued to flood the community with drugs and weapons and create the prison industrial complex. Now, Biden's been in there four years and the black community has descended into chaos. And their new thing that they push to us to vote for them is abortion. Now, the whole thing now is you got to vote for us because Trump is so terrifying. Let me be the first black man to tell you. I'm not scared of Trump even a little bit. I fear for my children and my family if the Democrats get back in office. That's the party of taking control of your children, marketing uh, alternative lifestyles to elementary school children. That's the party of Epstein. It's the party of debauchery. It's really a demon crossy. And black men, we can't afford to be shamed or bullied into supporting a democratic party, which has always been the party of the slave masters. That's why they talk to black people like they're slaves. I'm going to show you a, 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 a few clips of these mammies. These mammies is trying to scare black people into voting for Biden. But they're scaring black women. They're not scaring the men. Everything they show about their reasons for not wanting Trump in has nothing to do with us. The Democratic Party are his enemies because of things they've done to him with their dirty politics. As black men, we don't have no beef with Trump. Biden is the worst of all evils. The Democratic Party is the worst of all evils. You should see Joy Reid and, and Whoopi Goldberg and the mammies that they pull out the fear monger. These mammies want to scare men into giving their votes to a party 
that has excluded black men. Always have excluded black men. Black men, we cannot afford to let Democrats get back in that office for another four years. Another four years of Biden and the borders open will be devastating. Our children will be competing with migrants. Our children will be gang banging against migrants. The workforce will be decimated because of cheap labor. So I want you to look at the fear mongering. We're gonna look at the fear mongering and their reasons for why we should support the Democratic Party. This is for fair usage, educational purposes, commentary. We're gonna start with the view. We're gonna start with we're gonna start with uh Queen Mammy, uh this one here, with the Goldberg. That her man, uh, when she was with Tom Dancing, took her out in blackface. Listen to him talk. Which is shocking because they always say, we don't watch that show, but I, I guess you but do. You <laughs> I guess you do because they were really triggered by what she said, particularly what she said about the possibility of you know who getting another term. Take a look. I am scared as heck. <laughs> Yeah. Which is why I'm traveling our country. You know, there's an old saying that there are only two ways to run mm. for office. Either without an opponent or scared. We don't run away from something when we're scared. We fight back against it. Mm. This is a repeat of the 2020 strategy, which is to fear monger about another Trump presidency, to claim that democracy as we know it is going to end. And quite honestly, this is the only strategy that is available to them. I hated that she said, I'm scared to death. Mm -hmm. You're the vice president of the United States. Say, I'm scared. We're going to win. It's going to be fine. Like, where's the confidence? She's scared because Trump has been saying that he was going to eliminate the deep state. He was going to get the traffickers out of there. He was going to see. They're using black women as uh, as attack dogs. You know why Kamala's scared? She know that they use the Justice Department against Trump and they fear that he's going to do the same thing to them. But what does that have to do with black men? Black children. Think about that. Black men and black children. They running their whole campaign on abortion. They're going to give you nothing else but abortion. I understand why she's scared, but black men, y'all should be scared to let Biden be in there for another four years, for real. And Kamala is running to be the first female commander in chief, and the ladies of primetime didn't think I'm scared as heck sent the right message. Did Kamala even prepare for this interview? The question is, what are they scared of? It's like, do MAGA supporters have some type of disease or something? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you folks are the snowflakiest people I've ever seen. You don't know what she's scared of. You don't know. You haven't been listening to what this man has said he's going to do on day one, how he's treated women. You don't think we're uncomfortable when somebody says, yeah, I'm the guy that got rid of, you know, Roe versus Wade. What do you mean? What are you scared of? You're a, uh, OK. I'll just pose. A I'm just telling you, look at what Whoopi Goldberg said. The only thing that they're concerned with is abortion. But they say, oh, this is a Christian nation and this is a moral uh, country. When the Democrats, only everything they support is immoral. They didn't even give black women a bill to protect them. They gave it to the Asians. And they, and they parade them in this late hour that we got a, some months before the election. And this is what they're saying. We're scared. We're scared. He's going to overturn abortion rights. But Biden is pushing for the destruction of the black nuclear family. And he seeks to replace us in our own communities and overrun us with migrants.
to compete with us for resources, jobs, benefits. But it doesn't affect these people because they're already rich. And they're going to be insulated because the migrants not where they at. But continue to listen to their reasoning. What? <laughs> to, to, you know, it's too, I can't mess up now. <laughs> but what you just said, yes, the guy himself has said, I'm going to be a dictator on day one. I'm going to roll back Roe v. Wade. One of the few times he actually told the truth. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that is what you should be scared of. And Kamala, basically, she's not personally scared. Again, she repeats it. We, as a black community, should be scared that we won't have easy access to abortion. It's, our, it's, it's harder to get a BBL than it is an abortion. It's harder to get cosmetic surgery than an abortion. And she said we should be scared because he said that. But we're not scared of being in two wars that have nothing to do with us. We're not scared of millions of migrants that we don't know who they are, what kind of disease they may have in our community. We're not scared that there is no economic policies or programs for black people. Think about what they're trying. This is so played out. And they push these mammies out there because they know women outnumber men. So if they can appeal to them, they think they can swing the vote. This is a very immoral and indecent party. And they are the worst of the two evils. Continue to listen to the view. Then I'm going to show you what Joy, Joy Reid said. She's scared for the country right. because the country will have a problem if he is in office. And he also will go after his enemies. Hello? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's what I... You see how she told the truth? You see how she really just told the truth? They're scared. So they want you to be scared because they are his political enemies, not black men, not the black community. So to keep him out of to keep him out of office, they will have you vote for a man who intends to undermine all the general aspirations of the black community. And she just said it. He's going to come after us right here, his enemies. I think Alyssa's at risk the most. I, I think that's what I took away from it. You know, I mean, yes, yeah, she's the second most powerful person in the world, and she's telling you, be very, very afraid. Yeah. She's explaining to you that our, our democracy really is an experiment. We're a very young country, and that experiment can fail on, in the hands of a dictator. Mm -hmm. We've seen it happen in history. There have been great nations that no longer exist because of someone like a Donald Trump. And so I want the second most powerful person in the world who happens to be a woman, tell me, be very, very afraid. Black men, you see how feminism trumps everything? How feminism is their main agenda. Politics is sad. We can't afford to let the Democratic Party win without it going unchallenged. Because four more years of Biden's administration, what does that look like for the black community? I'm not talking about these elites. I'm talking about the average working man trying to take care of a family. What does it look like for them? Why, these people here, fear monger, and they, and they say in your face, the only thing we're concerned with is abortion, us, LGBTQ rights, and the Asians and immigrants. Why would a black man vote for that? Why would you vote for your enemies? Just think about that. You're, psychologically, think about who Joe Biden and Kamala Harris is. Kamala Harris 
whole claim to fame was putting black mothers in jail in California because their children were truant. These Kamala Harris and Joe Biden have did more to destroy the black community than any other president in modern history. Facts. Research, research who the Democratic Party really is. They fought to keep us in slavery, the Democrats. And they, and they put these women out here to fear monger. But the women say, we don't care if they do anything for the rest of the community. We don't care. We just want to have abortions and we just want to be in position. Let's listen to some more. Great. And what I liked about the interview yesterday is that she, at this point, I hope I never hear again, she is not qualified to be the president. That's right. Because she had the temperament, she had the knowledge, she had the demeanor, she had it all. And I think she proved to the world. Watch what I say to white America. This is what I'm going to say to white America, to the white man in America. Y'all want to let women run this country, huh? This to the white man. Y'all want to keep y'all foot on the black man so bad that y'all ought to put these mammies in office over y'all. So they can have their abortions. They can change the gender of the children. They can be the leaders of the free uh debaucherous Babylonian country in the world. You can do whatever you want to. You can twerk on in front of Martin Luther King statues. You can do whatever you want to do. As long as you stay on the plantation. But this is I'm this white man. Y'all dislike the black man so much that y'all put the mammies over us and try to help. You know the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that. He said, in the last days, the enemy will use the woman to destroy the black man. Facts. Nobody understood what he meant by that. What you mean, uh, Elijah Muhammad? That they're going to use black women to, to, to destroy the black man? Yes, brother. That's the devil's last tool. To put them with their emotional illogical thinking in a position over you while the rest of the world gets more powerful you get more weaker when you see the asians getting more powerful you see the hispanics get more powerful they want you to believe it's because you lazy and you won't pull yourself up by your bootstraps but they won't tell you all the social roadblocks and the internal enemies that they create for you and the obstacles that they throw in your way psychologically. Because now, if you speak against them, oh, it's misogynist. You can't say this. They get to the point to where we can't even say anything. It's so many button words. You can't say that. You can't say that. You can't say that. So once they shut you up, you can't even complain. They don't even want to hear your grievances. Because they already have an agenda. World, in my opinion, she is ready to be that heartbeat. And she will more and more as she keeps speaking. She gets People will get better. it. She's gotten better and better. But you know what? You know what? Just to the Caucasian man in America. Let the Indian woman run your country that you took from the Native Americans. You put, yeah, put them in power. Have, even have babies with them so that the dominant genes can produce more black people. Because everything come out of black woman womb is considered black. So yeah, give them a shot and see what that looks like to your community.
Right. So I personally thought it was her strongest moment for two reasons. Um, she's telling the truth. That's always a good thing mm -hmm. for politicians, mm -hmm. but it's motivating. Um, I quote it all the time, but Rachel Maddow rightly said here, in this country, in a two-party system, either candidate has a 50-50 mm -hmm. shot at winning the yep. presidency. The worst thing the Biden-Harris uh, Biden -Harris ticket could do is be complacent and overconfident. Yeah. That's why I was frustrated, frankly, when Chris Christie's like, they're going to blow Donald Trump out of the water. The, the polls yeah. don't suggest that. Yeah. Where I took issue with her, and by the way, so grateful for her coming here and giving us the full hour. That's yeah, honestly dude. incredible and smart campaigning. Um, what I felt like the weakness that they're going to have to hone on the campaign trail is she was saying, vote for us because we agree with you on the issues. But I felt like she didn't connect, vote with us because we are going to solve these issues. So abortion, they're with you on it. She supports reproductive rights. She wants access to abortion. But they're in office right now. What are they going to do for places that don't have abortion rights. Or I asked about the border, and she did rightly say there's a bill in the Senate that Republicans... So you heard what she said. I'm asking the black community. Black people is all we want in this country for our tax dollars, for the blood, sweat, and tears of our ancestors is abortion? I told you these people ain't really mad at black men. They mad at God because we are black men. Everybody hate us, but everybody want to be us. Everybody want to be a nigga too. It's time to have nigga issues. I'm going to skip off there. They whole thing is going to keep telling you about how abortion is the most important thing to the black community. Black community, please get in the comments to tell me, is, abor is abortion the most important thing in our community right now? Hey, you know, this time of year, we all keep getting pinged with political fundraising ads. But here's the thing. No sellout. And we begin tonight with fascism and how it takes root. Now it Here we go. More fear monging from another mammy. And this one is a tether. She want her job so bad, but she the gift that keeps on giving because everything come out of her mouth is stupid. She gets away was saying that Donald Trump is another Hitler. Really? They done dug Hitler up. Isn't usually a dramatic storm the palace coup like we saw on January 6th. It's more often a deal, a bargain between the... As a man and a soldier, I respect that. I respect, I respect getting out there handling your business. Who's scared of that? Who really scared of that? Because if white, because if black men was in danger, they would have ran up in our community. But they didn't. They ran up in Congress. They didn't attack us. But no, all that stuff they say that happened on January the 6th, none of it had anything to do with the black community. You think about that. Could you imagine all those people that ran up in Congress, running up in our neighborhood, as weak as we as, as weak as we made ourselves with our disunity, they want you to think that that was an attack on us. How many of you men out there know what it looks like to be attacked? When you are being attacked, this is fear monger. Listen to him. Listen to this one here. Listen to this man. Would be dictator and the establishment, both political and media, who believe that wielding actual political power will take him. It's usually what we often it, it will actually will actually tame him, I should say. It's actually what we often get wrong about fascism in describing the connections between interwar. How can y'all take her serious with this blonde hat on? For Europe and the present day U.S., scholar John Gans writes, quote, We have this image in our heads of the fascist rise to power that comes from fascist propaganda, but it is much more political than that. In review of Gans's new book, In the American Prospect, Rick Perlstein also notes the crucial role of the, quote, responsible conservatives 
who made their peace with the strong man, believing he could be controlled. Perlstein recalls Germany's Vice Chancellor Franz von Papen, the architect of the 1933 coalition that made Adolf Hitler the chancellor. When the people around Papen voiced their concerns about putting Hitler in power. Have you noticed Donald Trump wasn't Hitler when he was hanging out with Mike Tyson? When all the rappers was um, using him in all those hundreds of songs? When he was having Amarosa with him? Uh, I mean, when did Donald Trump become an enemy to black people? Before he started beefing with the Democrats, you let the you let the Democratic Party, your biggest enemies, tell you this man is your enemy. It's sad. It's sad that us as black men in our communities have become so weak that we let mammies get out here and decide our whole destiny based on fear. How many of you brothers out there worried about being put back in slavery and marched in the concentration camps and being overran by fascism? We worried about being overran by migrants, not being able to find decent jobs to take care of our families. What's being taught to our children in the school system? Are you gonna let them convince you it is. And, and they lying about everything. These are some lying bras. For real. They all actors. Power. Pappen said, in two months, we'll have pushed Hitler so far into the corner that he'll squeal. There's also the phenomenon of elites who become supplicants of the fascist leader, forgetting they ever had any concerns at all. Remember what Lindsey Graham tweeted back in 2016 when Trump was still an outlier in the party? I do. Quote, if we nominate Trump, we will get destroyed and we will deserve it. When Trump won the White House anyway, Graham got busy reducing himself to a MAGA footstool in the U.S. Senate. Proximity to power will do that. Like Trump, Hitler was also viewed as a clown, a goon who, would be, who could be kept in line. And then there are the accommodations that the media makes with autocracy. In November 1922, the New York Times gave its readers their first glimpse of Hitler. It was a profile of the fascist leader's early rise in Bavaria in Germany that got a key point very wrong, asserting that, quote, Hitler's anti-Semitism was not so violent or genuine as it sounded. Before he rose to power, Hitler staged a coup known as the Beer Hall Putsch. It was a coup that failed. Sound familiar? Hitler went to prison for it. But the failed coup set the stage for Nazi Germany. And when he was freed from prison just over a year after the failed putsch, the Times offered this unfortunate and incorrect assessment that Hitler had been tamed by prison. The next year, Mein Kampf was published. So much of this sounds familiar, and believe me, I wish it didn't. The same thing happened with a lot of other autocrats. The establishment thinks they can be controlled, and poof, they're I got another question to my viewers. Do you think this mammy came up with the this Hitler diatribe by herself? You think she wrote this on her own? You think she was brave enough to come out and use anti-Semitism and Hitler and all that on MSNBC? She's pushing a narrative like a like, like a puppet. What does Hitler have to do with the black community right now? Hitler been dead since like what, 1945? They want to scare you so bad, but it's cool. Scare the women folk. Us black men, let's stand up. Let them scare the hell out the women folk. They should have been scared. They should have been scared when Dylan Roof be coming up in their churches and the other ones come up in the grocery store and take them out. They're not scared of that. They scared of not being there to have abortions. Wow. They want to kill their baby so much, maybe they act more like Hitler. Stuck with them. The thought that these men could be tamed is what we're seeing right now in the presidential election year. Where 
Let me say this and I'm going to talk. Okay. What's the strongest uh, way to destroy somebody? Is it by coming at them with a gun? Or is it by creating an ideal in their mind that makes them destroy themselves? If I go out and I shoot a kid, that's horrible. You're going to say, give me life. Never let him out. Never let that nigga out. But what about a woman who goes and had five, six, seven abortions? I know women, I know women that had abortions at six months. A whole baby. Kicking and everything. And go find a place to have an abortion. And the young lady was a minor when she did. Her parents didn't even know she was going to do that. She had another little one of her young friends take her to an abortion clinic. And had abortion at six months. Doesn't that whole scenario sound criminal? Politicians, journalists, and voters speak of a dangerous person getting reined in once back in power. And those who are legitimately afraid of this outcome are being quiet about it. Last week, the annual meeting of the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland, brought together thousands of participants from around the globe. The Davos consensus is in. Trump will win the election, based solely off of polls, headlines, and mood. But executives could only refer to their prediction as a geopolitical risk. Yet privately, per reporting by CNBC's Andrew Ross Sorkin, they were far more explicit, saying they are frustrated, upset, worried, and nervous about a second Trump presidency. But they don't want to say that out loud for the same reasons as last time. Fear of retribution. Did it on the Republican establishment. These people, let's just be clear, despise the MAGA base, but they all... Let me ask this to him. To every grandparent, I'm a grandparent. When you look at your grandbaby, have you, if it, has it ever crossed your mind that you wish that it would have been aborted? Because I remember when I was young and I was having my first child and my mother was telling uh, my girlfriend, in, well, you know, he irresponsible. I don't know if you should keep that baby. He very irresponsible. You should really think this over girl. My son, he can barely take care of himself. And now every time you see her, she in my daughter's face and acting like she loves her so much. And I be saying in my mind, logically, if you had it your way, she wouldn't even be here. Think about that. Also fear them. So they say, let's just make common cause. He'll sign the bills we give him. We get our tax cuts. We get the conservative court and their rulings to ban abortion and affirmative action. We just need to control him. After, of course, bringing him to power. You don't get more establishment than the party chair, Ronna Romney McDaniel, who said this last night on Fox. I do think there is a message that's coming out from the voters, which is very clear. We need to unite around our eventual nominee, which is going to be Donald Trump. The final piece of this puzzle are the voters who crave an autocrat. Trump and people like him appeal to a group of Americans who hate the modern, multicultural, and increasingly liberal, secular society they live in. And they imagine that if, if the real secret... Did you really pay attention to her words? She said, we don't like the secular, liberal, open society we live in. What she's really saying is don't y'all like Babylon? Don't y'all like Babylon is the, is the cage of every clean bird and foul spirit? Don't y'all like it? That somebody can have your child change their gender? Don't y'all like that? Don't you like the fact that we can send, that you can send your son to school and he come back and says now he wants to change his gender? Because or something he was taught and learned in school that you know nothing about. These are these people. Who do they appeal to? Put in my comments. Who are they appealing to? Crit majority wasn't 
being thwarted by a secret cabal of swamp creatures and communist libs, they would win. They think the real secret majority wants a theocracy like they do and hates immigrants and fears LGBTQ people like they do. But the majority actually doesn't. Last night, the New Hampshire results showed that Trump is clearly going to be the nominee. But independents, college educated voters. I'm going to stop there. Think about all the reasons they want Biden in. Think about it. Multiculturalism, secular, immoral. But at the end, the black man is still at the bottom. I know a lot of y'all ain't going to like this video or like what I said. You know what I mean? But this message is to the brothers anyway. This, this message is to the men. We can't afford to let the Democrats get back in that White House. Another four years of this? I don't think the black community could survive another four years of Biden, period. It's already in the shambles. Well, this video is not going to be pushed. Like, share, and subscribe. Think about what I said. If you disagree, it's okay. But no lies detected. Peace, Santa out of Detroit.